If you were to tell me 10 years ago that we would be getting a live-action Legend of Zelda movie in the near future, I would have let out a good old chuckle and told you to stop being such a silly little groose. But sure enough, here we are with a Zelda movie currently in the works, and well, there's about a 92% chance that they're absolutely gonna fumble the bag harder than Groose trying to get a date with Princess Zelda. Here's a number. Sight! <laughs> that's the wrong number! <laughs> So how can a franchise that's absolutely adored by psychotic, unsatisfiable fanboys like myself be successfully translated into a film that maintains the spirit and soul of the games? Well, you sticky little glazer, let me tell you. And before we get started, we're on our way towards 10,000 subscribers and so far we're doing great, closing in on nearly 2,000 subscribers in just under 3 months. So if, you, if you're feeling... sorry, these margaritas are really kicking in. If you're feeling wild, go ahead and hit subscribe to become a guardian of the glaze here at the Milky Donut. Alright, well with that out of the way, welcome to the Milky Donut where we talk all things games, movies, and things that piss us off. We're gonna start off this video with a little disclaimer protecting me, um, yes, Milky yours truly. Yes, I am indeed a Zelda fanboy. Yes, I am an Ocarina of Time fanboy. Yes, I do have unrealistically high expectations, which I am very much trying to hamper. And no, I do not think they will actually do half the things I'm going to bring up in this video. Thus, these are just strictly my opinions based off of what I like about the Zelda franchise, and what I think would make for a faithful and well-done Zelda movie, and nothing more. So if you disagree, that is totally okay. Now, with that being said, our first must for a successful Zelda movie has to be a good cast. Now, obviously casting is always important when creating a film, but it's especially important here because of how loved these characters of the franchise are. And not only that, but our main protagonist is seen as more of an avatar to project yourself into, rather than a real deep character himself. Now, sure, Link has unique mannerisms and personality quirks that shine through once in a falling moon, but for the most part, he's meant to be seen as a Link between the player and the world of Hyrule. And not only that, but uh, yeah, he doesn't talk either, so that's a whole nother obstacle to deal with. Every character in The Legend of Zelda has distinct traits that make them memorable. For Link specifically, casting should focus on finding an actor who can convey bravery, determination, and a sense of humility while also having a child's perspective on whatever journey they decide to put him on. Again, Link is often a silent protagonist in the games, and by often, I mean, always. Which means the actor must excel in nonverbal communication, expressing emotion and character development through body language and facial expressions. Or they just have him talk, which I personally think is the more realistic option. I may never whistle again, period! Don't you ever clean in here? Excuse me, princess! I really don't see them making him silent unless they give a narrative reason for him not being able to speak. Maybe he speaks as a child but takes a Deku nut to the throat and can't speak anymore or something, I don't know, but I'm gonna assume that they're gonna have him speak for the sake of this video. Link's silence in the games is a core aspect of his character, allowing players to project themselves onto him. In the film, it's important to respect this tradition while finding a way to integrate dialogue meaningfully. The goal is not to overshadow Link's traditional silence, but to complement it. Make Link a man of few words, making every word of his dialogue count and have purpose. Give him enough dialogue to give a clear sense of personality, but don't turn him into a jokey, unserious, bumbling idiot. Use dialogue sparingly during critical moments of the story, such as during pivotal confrontations, moments of decision, or personal reflections, while providing dialogue that reveals aspects of Link's character, motivations, and growth without overwhelming his silent, contemplative nature. We need an actor who is an expert at physically conveying emotion and intentions with minimal dialogue. Look at Andy Serkis, for example, who built his entire career off of doing motion capture work for characters with minimal or even no dialogue, expressing everything you need to know about what the character is feeling through his eyes alone. We need an actor who can pull this type of acting off, which will be tough because Andy Serkis has spent years mastering his craft, while a proper actor for Link will be between the ages of 12 and 17, assuming they're going to be faithful to the source material in that aspect. I also don't think an A-list actor should play Link. There's not a single A-list actor that I can personally think of that would not immediately take me out of my immersion. No, I don't want to see Tom Holland or Timothy Chalamet play Link. Please, for the love of my beautiful Lord and Savior, do not do that. Now, one of the issues with making a live-action Zelda is it's nearly impossible to make the characters look how they do in the games. However, I do have a solution which does have actual potential of happening based off of some old tweets from the director himself, Wes Ball. Just because a film is live-action, 
doesn't mean they can't use visual effects on the characters themselves. A prime example would be Alita Battle Angel. While yes, it's a live action film, mocap was used to achieve the manga style character design of Alita, giving a realistic yet non-human appearance. And like I said, there's actually a chance of this method being used for a Zelda movie, because the director himself said he would want to use motion capture for the characters to achieve the same feel that the games produce. Now, I personally think this would be the best option if you're going to use a real-life actor for the character of Link, keeping the live-action aspect while also giving the uncanny feel of a fantastical race of people. And with the casting out of the way, now we're going to talk about an aspect of the Zelda movie which I think could be controversial and have many different opinions about, rightfully so. That being what game the movie should be based off of, and how the plot of the movie should transpire. Now, for me, and if you know anything about me or this channel, you would know that I would like a movie based off of Ocarina of Time, not only because I love that game and story, but I just think it would translate well to a film format. Everyone loves a hero's journey story, and what better hero's journey to tell than the hero of times? I think the temples and dungeons would work great for giving good action scenes, boss fights, and story progression. The game already has MacGuffins that Link has to acquire, giving reasons for him to journey to said locations. Seeing these dungeons and temples fully realized in a live action film, if done correctly, could be absolutely awe-inspiring. Imagine going to the mysteriously eerie yet beautiful forest temple, or the serene water temple, only to completely switch up the vibes with the shadow temple. If done faithfully and with care, I mean, we could get visuals and set pieces that live up to legendary fantasy movies even to the level of something as good as Lord of the Rings. High expectations? Yes, but I truly believe that the series has the potential to achieve it. This brings me to my next point, which is something that I think is the least likely to happen, but I think the use of mild horror and adult elements should be used. Even if it's just one or two scenes that uses some elements of horror. Imagine a scene where the camera plunges into the depths of a dark, creepy, ancient dungeon, illuminated only by flickering torches and the dim glow of magical artifacts. The palpable tension of navigating through ancient, booby-trapped corridors and facing menacing creatures would translate the game's immersive gameplay into a gripping cinematic experience. A scary dungeon scene would also deepen the film's narrative tension. Zelda games often use dungeons to symbolize Link's internal struggle and growth. Similarly, a well-crafted dungeon scene in the movie could highlight the hero's courage, resilience, and cleverness. The games, in my opinion, somewhat underplay how scary it would be for a kid to be thrown into one of these dungeons, further supporting why Link holds the Triforce of Courage. It provides a natural climax for character development, forcing the protagonist to confront their fears and overcome obstacles. The intensity of a dungeon environment would make these moments of triumph even more rewarding for the audience. Visually and atmospherically, dungeons offer a chance to create a uniquely eerie and captivating setting. The contrast between the dark, oppressive dungeons and the vibrant world outside can be stark, amplifying the sense of danger and discovery. On top of that, set design, special effects, and sound design could be combined to create an environment that is both haunting and mesmerizing. For instance, the use of practical effects and on-location set pieces could produce a tangible, immersive experience, while CGI could enhance the more fantastical elements such as the many enemies and bosses Link is sure to encounter. Unfortunately, I really don't see Nintendo delving super deep into the horror aspects for the film simply because I'm sure they're going to want to appeal to as much of their younger audience as possible, especially with the recent releases of Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild. I just, I really don't see them going super deep into that aspect. There's also the chance that an entirely new story is written for the film, only using elements from previous games. I actually feel like this has a decent chance of happening as it's a safe bet and you wouldn't have to worry about appeasing fanboys of whatever game you're basing your film off of. And with all that being said, we couldn't possibly make a video about how to make a good Zelda movie without talking about sound design and music. One of the most significant aspects of translating the Zelda games to film is the incorporation of the iconic musical themes. The series is known for its memorable compositions such as Zelda's Lullaby, The Legend of Zelda theme, Gerudo Valley, and so many more. And these themes are not only beloved by fans, but also carry substantial emotional weight, instantly evoking memories of the games. Including these recognizable pieces in the film would create a powerful connection with the audience, reinforcing the movie's connection to the original series. However, it is crucial that these themes are adapted appropriately for different scenes. For example, a heroic theme could be reimagined to suit an intense battle sequence, while a softer variation could accompany moments of exploration or introspection. It would be an absolute sin to not make the music a central focus of the Zelda movie. The Zelda series has arguably one of the best musical track records of any game series ever, and it should be heavily utilized in the film, as well as iconic item, enemy, and action sounds. Crystal Gap. 
You're hot! To really sum up what a Zelda movie needs to do to be a good Zelda adaptation, it really just needs to be faithful to the source material. It honestly doesn't even have to be an exact retelling of a specific game, as long as it maintains the heart and soul of what makes Zelda games what they are. A film shouldn't have to rely on the love of the source material in order to succeed. It needs to be able to stand on its own as a film. Fan service should definitely be included but not relied upon. And luckily, whether you like his track record or not, West Ball's affection for the Legend of Zelda series is a testament to his deep connection with this specific gaming world. He has frequently shared his enthusiasm for the franchise, highlighting how its immersive worlds, intricate puzzles, and memorable characters have influenced his creative vision. Ball's admiration for Zelda is not just about nostalgia, but also about the innovative game design and storytelling that the series exemplifies which is exactly what this film needs. I'd rather have a director who understands and loves the source material make this film, than someone who has no idea what the Zelda series is or what makes it so amazing, regardless of how good their resume is. Westball's love for the Legend of Zelda series is a testament to his ability to adapt this franchise and the impact the series has had on his creative works. His appreciation for the games influences his filmmaking style and vision, making him a great candidate for the Zelda film adaptation. With his passion and understanding of the series, Ball could bring a respectful and imaginative approach to translating Zelda's epic adventures and rich storytelling into a cinematic masterpiece. Now, the Zelda movie is a huge deal not just because it's a Zelda movie, but because it's a chance to show the rest of the world why we love Zelda so much. A lot of people don't even really know what Zelda is, and I want nothing more than this movie to succeed and make a billion dollars like the Mario movie did and put Zelda on the map even more than it already is. And obviously there are a ton of aspects that go into what makes movies good or bad, but these are just a few things as a Zelda fan I feel like the movie needs to hit to be a successful adaptation. But what do you think? What did I miss? Go ahead and comment down below what you want to see, what you hope for for the Zelda movie, or what your concerns are. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time on the Milky Donut.